today I'm here with Jeff Gallus. Uh, Jeff is from Full Mo Lightning, which is based in Berlin, Germany. Um, I'm here with Jeff because I wanted to ask him about living on crypto in Germany. Uh, Jeff, how are you today? Good. Thank you. How are you yourself? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited for... to talk about well, Bitcoin in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for accepting the interview. And uh, yeah, that's what we're here to do. So, Jeff, what is the Bitcoin community like in Germany? Um, I think it's a pretty, pretty strong community. We, it's been, it's pretty old, I would say, like some of the older Bitcoin are also Germans. I mean, you have Bitcoin is all over the world, but there's especially a strong community in Berlin. Uh, started around room 77. That is the, the first brick and mortar bar to accept Bitcoin. And it did so 2011. So more approximately the bar has closed last fall due to a plentitude of reasons. It's not a singular reason, but um, so now we are in the virtual realm, which everybody is anyways nowadays, um, especially in last year and this year. So yeah, um, Berlin, Berlin has a strong core community, but there are other plenty of other new and emergent local communities. And I think right now um, there's, there's always new people coming in. Uh, every wave sort of, of adoption brings in new people uh, and most of the people stay, not all of them, but, but a lot of them. So there's, um, there's new communities that are not necessarily based locally, but um, all over the place. They're basically just um, German speaking, if you will. So a lot of the people that I would consider to be part of the German community are also based in Switzerland or Austria. It, in, in most contexts, context, it doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't matter if you're in Vienna or Zurich or Berlin or Frankfurt. And of course, there's, there's also, there's a strong community in Munich. There's a strong, com an old community, like a core community in Frankfurt. It's not really big, but really active. And, and so it's the kind of like high quality, not necessarily quantity. <laughs> and, and so there's a lot of local hotspots. But if you're asking about cities in Germany, that's like Berlin, Munich, and Frankfurt, I would say have, uh, and of course, Leipzig, it also has a really strong community. So you do have all these old local hotspots, these kind of community hubs. And around that, there's, there's of course, an online community. There, there's big, that kind of communities that gather around podcasts. For example, there's the um, 21 podcast, which has a large community. It's 21 in German, and which is a podcast that is like incredibly productive. They produce like one or two episodes every week and all German content but also um, communities that kind of uh, circle around YouTube, YouTubers, like the plot block trainer community is a big community. So, so you have all these, these little like communities that are kind of all part of the big picture. And I think like a lot of the people know each other as well. So it's, it's both still expanding, but, but also somewhat tight knit because um, Sooner or later, everybody knows everybody, which is, I guess, true for, for most Bitcoiners all over the world anyways. I actually heard that Germany is one of the leading um, countries for people running full notes. Yeah, I mean, the, looking at the statistics, that's true. And looking at the orders we get for, for the Fulmo shop where you can buy um, fully assembled hardware notes um, with all the Raspi Blitz. Um, I mean, we are based in Germany, but a lot of our orders are also from Germany or German speaking countries. It, I mean, it might have to do something with our cultural background in a way and the, the communities we cater to, but we do ship internationally. So um, I find it always a bit surprising, like how many sort of hidden Bitcoiners there are that as Bitcoin citizens that run their own node and, and do, do their research, keep their own keys, you know, that, that's always good to see. Like every day I'm amazed by that. How easy is it to convert BTC to euros? Is it pretty easy these days or is it still kind of difficult? The exchange itself is, is okay. Um, Germany had a good, good head start, uh, head start in 2011 to 13, I would say, but um, there was a lot of uncertainty in the regulations. So I guess at that time, a lot of businesses were driven away into more welcoming countries uh, like the Netherlands or at the time the UK. So there's not really a lot of native German changes or crypto services, um, but there are some, and, and I think like the ones that are there are pretty strong and have a 
good customer base so so you can use them that but um, I mean, to me personally, it's always more interesting to to spend my my Bitcoin not only to to buy some, but also to to actually use them. I actually like just supporting merchants, for example, that that do accept Bitcoin and Bitcoin like on chain or via the Lightning Network, which is another the other thing that has kind of um, like which is kind of new in recent years, but also kind of up and running because it makes it just so more easy, much more easy and, and more convenient, faster, more private to, to transact with Bitcoin. So what about German businesses? Do any German businesses accept Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies or do you see lightning payments as, as a payment option? Yeah, um, well, there are some, if you talk about traditional business, businesses, um, there are some that use payment providers, you know, like the... The usual ones here. Um, I think like the biggest one, the biggest well-known is Lieferando, which is a delivery, um, yeah, like food delivery service. It's, it's incorporated in, in a larger pan-European group. So I'm not sure what the mother company is called right now, but they do, they've been accepting Bitcoin for, for years already using a payment provider. And, and then there's like specialized shops, like for example, shopandbit.de, which is a... Uh, pretty much all purpose shop where you can buy everything you can imagine in, in Bitcoin. They have like 300,000 Bitcoin on chain and via Lightning. And they also make, you can give them best. So that is pretty convenient. So they, they're just pretty much, if whatever item you want to pay in Bitcoin, they'll uh, organize it for you and ship it to you and you can pay in Bitcoin. So, so th those are two examples that uh, just popped in my head. Um, and that's online. Of course, is also the offline world. And again, Berlin has been pretty leading over the past decade in, in offering stores and spaces to, to accept Bitcoin. Um, I already mentioned Room 77, but there's probably a dozen other bars and restaurants, for example, that where you can pay, pay directly and, and a bunch of other stores. Um, there's, there's a good website called coinpages.io that lists a lot of these merchants locally. And the difference to other websites is that um, they actually do quality checks. So they will try to order something or call the owner and uh, verify that they actually do accept Bitcoin because they are, some of the directories are a bit outdated. So um, it has happened to me before. Like I, I wanted to go to some, some place, let's say New York, and I was going to like go to a restaurant and pay with Bitcoin because it's still exciting. <laughs> um, but the directory wasn't up to date and the restaurant something it didn't even exist anymore so that was kind of a pity but so um i think coin pages for example they they try to fix that by putting in a lot of manual work and part of their stuff is um, just getting community input and more tips from the local community you can actually go there and verify it or know the owners or whatever um so so that's also a big part and i think like there's a good amount of amount of numbers of of local merchants all over germany where you can like buy something usually food or drinks and have a nice and friendly bitcoin conversation and um, also point journalists towards that because brick and mortar stores are a pretty important um thing for just for press because you can it, it's it makes a whole difference if if a reporter can like pay for a burger and a beer in bitcoin or he just like write reads about these crazy mining facilities somewhere in I don't know, Siberia, Siberia or somewhere. So the, um, I think like the merchant adoption on a local level might happen, like not on a big scale for, for many years, but to have like these little spots that also serve as community hotspots and congregate and exchange ideas and also try Bitcoin and, and see like what works and what doesn't. This is also a good testing field for wallets, for example. So Long story short, I think these merchants are important and luckily we still have a lot. It hasn't exploded yet. Like maybe everybody was expecting at some point that every merchant will accept Bitcoin at some point because it's inevitable, but that hasn't happened so far. But there are some nice places. In developing economies, we see a lot more advantages for people using Bitcoin due to the currency devaluation and, and financial censorship. Seeing that Germany has like a world-class um, financial system is there advantages for for the person using bitcoin in germany well if you if i want to give my neighbors five euro worth of bitcoin it's probably easier just to walk over there and hand them out hand them over a five euro bill 
just for the transaction purpose. I'm not talking about the store of value right now. Um, just for transaction. However, uh, Germany has has a lot of immigrants and migrants from even from the past years, not not only traditionally, but also like new migrants. And there are lots of expats community that do use Bitcoin to to send money. And also around, uh, I, I met, for example, I met an Iranian student who is getting money from Iran to pay her tuition. And for her, it's really a hassle to to use the traditional money system because it's possible to to get money f- from Iran to Germany for f- the legitimate purpose of just educating yourself <laughs> and paying your tuition fee. So. Um, there's there's a big use case I would say f- um, for Bitcoin in in that sort of international context. If you just look at Germany as a as a one unit, um, of course I mean there's advantages to to pay people via Bitcoin, um, but I would say the the it's not it's relatively advanced so and it has been getting more advanced i guess also part of because bitcoin is around and has shown what's possible so so they they all they like personal use case just to sending money to like using it as your personal de- transactional device within germany is maybe not the biggest use case but internationally this and of course um for storing your value the germany is part of the euro just as um all the other <laughs> european or EU, eu countries and the, the problems are pretty similar to what we see with the US dollar uh, inflation, money printer, go brr, you know, you name it. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same. So I think that's, that's another big narrative that people are, um, that is important for people and, and in, in the way that people use Bitcoin, not only to transact, but also just to hold. And just to hold, I mean, it sounds, it's a pretty big use case. I want to switch gears here. I saw on Twitter that you tweeted about seven days of Bitcoin leading up to the lightning hack sprint this weekend. Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about it? Seven days of Bitcoin is a seven day challenge. It's a personal challenge, kind of asking yourself, what have you done for Bitcoin today? You know, like maybe paraphrasing, ask not what Bitcoin can do for you, ask what you can do for Bitcoin. And it's about pushing your, your limits a bit. Saying that you didn't do anything, but I feel like everybody can everybody can contribute, and some people might need a little extra motivation just to take the first steps because it's still like a super nice, helpful, welcoming community. It is um, permissionless, but sometimes I guess like the the perceived gravity of some of the projects um, might be hindering new folks to just chime in. And um, with the seven days of Bitcoin challenge, is pretty much the question to yourself: like, what can you do? How can you contribute? And Make your first steps um, or your second step or your third step. What It doesn't really matter just as long as you do something, um, get started or continue to um, do whatever you do. And we've been having daily calls to, to kind of talk about what, what people did and to motivate each other and maybe provide some help. And we've seen some, some pretty cool results um, and it's pretty much everything. There's a wide variety. It's from people like putting up stickers as the decentralized marketing um, team for Bitcoin worldwide to, uh, and also in uh, within the seven days of Bitcoin challenge to like just stacking sets but also writing blog articles posting reviews of uh, Bitcoin wallets um, recording podcast episodes uh, c- cleaning up code answering questions on stack exchange so there's there's pretty much translations are always something that is um really helpful and also relatively easy to everybody who speaks two languages um, more or less fluently. So there, um, but, but there's something for everyone. And I think like this is the kind of spirit um, that that's the sort of foundation, if you will, for seven days of Bitcoin. And it's also lead, which is a lightning network, um, online hackathon, if you will, it starts this Saturday and it, you can read about the details on wiki.fulmo.org. That's wiki.fulmo.org. And there are some challenges. It's about contributing to the Lightning Network in, in a larger sense. It's, it has a good focus on coding and contributing code to existing projects, but it's also about optimizing your Lightning, um, Lightning node, for example, and improving routing. 
It's about uh, maybe better channel management, about looking uh, at new stuff, like things that, that's been relatively hard um, in the last couple of days again, uh, or, or other new, new cool features like um, exploring what Breeze has to offer. They just put in a new podcast feature and maybe talking about your experiences, having a little session there and finding people that are also interested and just share your, your ideas, your impressions, maybe some learnings. For some of the things, the developers will be present and just take questions and, and just have the, the chance to kind of um, exchange with the community. So that's the idea um, in a broader context. In the end, um, contributing something positive for to Bitcoin, to the Lightning Network, and embracing the, the free and open source philosophy that we all, are in a sense Bitcoin and we can all push it forward and define it and we don't have to wait for anybody else to do it for us. It still, it still comes down to, to single people and working on this together and I think that's still the ethos of Bitcoin has always been and um, big news aside, I mean of course there's also big people support doing, doing big pushes for adoptions um, but you shouldn't be discouraged just because you're not a rocket billionaire or have a multi-billion dollar company behind you that can buy Bitcoin. It's also like you can do something for Bitcoin as well. And that is uh, the goal to encourage everybody to participate. Quick question. What's your favorite lightning implementation? Are you a LND guy, a C lightning guy, and a sync guy? I've used and tried them all. I wouldn't say it's... It, they all have the, um, their good use cases and um, they are all like part of the larger ecosystem. I wouldn't say like, this is better, or this is my favorite. It's, um, they are all, I like them all pretty much. And, they, they <laughs> and the people behind it are also really nice. I, I think they're like, they're, they're working open-minded people that, that want to push Lightning and Bitcoin forward. So, um, I th and, there, and there's more implementations coming. I mean, there's also um, Square Crypto is working on the Rust library and one or two more it's, um, that, that might be up and coming. And the, the RGB, um, L, uh, what's it called? LMP BP um, implementation is another one. So, so it's, it's more than just the three. And I think um, we are really early. So we'll probably see, see some more implementations over the years as well. You mentioned the Raspi Blitz. For those of us that don't know, can you tell us what a Raspi Blitz is? Of course. It is a Bitcoin and Lightning Network full node that's running on a Raspberry Pi, in a Raspberry Pi 4 in this case, which is the latest model. It is completely free and open source software, so you can uh, download and run it yourself. Uh, you, you, we have a hardware list. You can just take off the shelf hardware, so you don't have to like buy it somewhere prepackaged or whatever wherever and, and trust the creators or the shop and you can completely um, modify it um, use it and or just implement your own your own app there the recipe blitz is sort of a you could also call it a node package because it it comes with like all the options to install bitcoin core of course a lightning network um, software in this case lnd but you can also run join market you can run additional interfaces for Lightning like RTL or Thunderhub um, and all different. I mean, there's, there's a whole list of, of different software that can run on, um, on it. And it also has a nice display. So you can just, you don't always have to like log into it. You don't need an extra um, terminal, but you can just quickly take a look about and then get some features on the display. If you want to, somebody would or you just want to see about the node health health um that's just pretty convenient and um also pretty unique that's very so maybe cool. maybe the general idea is of course that everybody should run their own full node and when when the raspberry blitz was started there wasn't there were there were always some full node projects around but there was never a, a lightning network full node project where, where it's like all like if you will, which made it easy to install and maintain. And out of this idea, the Raspberry Blitz was born to enable everyone at home to run their own Bitcoin and Lightning Network full node in a permissionless and fully transparent way on the cheapest but most reliable hardware possible. And this is how like the whole thing came together. And if you want to build it yourself, it, 
the parts con consumer prices are probably like somewhere around 150 to 180 euros dollars in pretty much the same if you just build it from scratch and and assemble it yourself and this is also one of the projects people have actually been doing for seven days of bitcoin uh, assembly uh, assembling new full nodes um, new raspy blitzes to to be yeah to be sovereign bitcoin individuals <laughs> I also was taking a look at the Fulmo website and I saw that you guys have a new project, which is a Lightning ATM. Would you tell us a little bit about the Lightning ATM project? Yeah, the, the Lightning ATM, just like the Raspberry Blitz, is also an open source project. Um, you can also go to the, the GitHub site. It was created by 21 is enough. And on the Fulmo shop, we do sell cases and soon DIY kits for the Lightning ATM. It's a little ATM that is maybe um, the size of a large, like the height of a large water bottle. And it has the coin acceptor in it. And the idea is that you can exchange fiat coins for Satoshis and it's done via the lightning network. And yeah, I mean, that's basically it. So it's, it's like a candy machine that gives you instead of candy, you get sets, sweet, sweet sets. <laughs> and it is, so it's, it's also a tinkering project um, it's been used for workshops for for conferences i know some people did it as a school project like there was this one teacher who was like hey this is great um i'm gonna make this a, a project for my class and everybody was building the atm so um this is sort of a you could put it in a bar or a cafe just to onboard people and like get a couple sets like maybe so just put in some spare change just to to like um expose people to it and get you like your, your toes in the water tip your toes in the water um, but but it's a really cool project. It's one of those um, hobbyists. If, if you have a free weekend, order the parts and put it together. And um, I'm sure you'll learn a lot on the way. Sometimes they, they will be pretty well documented by now. So uh, documentation was something that 21 is enough in the in the ATM community. There's a there's a little community around that project. Well, really paid a lot of attention to to make it as easy as possible for for lay people to to build it themselves to be able to, yeah, to, to use it and, and spread the word. Um, how does it work? Like with the QR code, like you just scan a QR code with your phone app or? Um, yeah, it has, um, it shows you a QR code and that is um, the, what's it called? The uh, L on, in the L on URL format. So you can use this sort of to, uh, the, that format allows you to, to kind of um, have pull sets, if you will. So. Um, it's, it's pretty much like a faucet um, to, to explain it in simple terms. So you, it shows you the QR code and, and you go to the faucet and you just withdraw the Bitcoin directly, the, the Satoshis directly to your wallet. So okay. it's a QR code and it's based on a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is, um, and, a, and a little uh, e-ink display. So it's relatively low power and it's also static, um, but also for that reason, it's relatively cheap as well. It doesn't really not need a lot of energy and you can run it for, for multiple days on a battery. If you, I mean, the power would be better, but you can also use it as a sort of device that you put in your car and, and I don't know, you go to the beach and have a spontaneous let's sail, let's introduce people to sets session. <laughs> in your opinion, what, where's the most important work being done right now in Bitcoin? There's not really a single thing that's being worked on. It's it's like everybody does their part, and I think like it's always important to to look at development, at developers, to fund developers, um, to to kind of create opportunities for more people to dive in as deep as possible on on the code side of things, because that's still kind of that's still the infrastructure that um, is being built for the whole world to potentially rely on in a hyper Bitcoinization model. So that's, that's important, but of course, like all the other things are uh, just as important. And I guess it, there's nothing really, not really one thing you could pin it down to, I think. It's, it's gotten too big and um, everybody like they're, there are so many playing fields that people can choose to play on that um, I wouldn't think, I, I wouldn't say like, this is where you have to go. 
of course, individually speaking, like if you're a great coder, you probably shouldn't go into marketing because then it's maybe not aligned to your skill set. But if you think like, but if you're into marketing, it's also great. You can do a lot um, in the field and there's just a need for people that are educated on the topic uh, in, in all these emerging Bitcoin companies where, where it's really like, it really pays off to, to have some enthusiasm and, and bring some expertise Plus, you also know something about marketing, for example, because usually the people that come in and apply it, even to Bitcoin companies are just marketing people. And so, yeah, I would say like just do work on the stuff there where you see your skill sets, your skill set, and where you have like the best market fit. What's the most popular like go-to Bitcoin exchange for people in Germany? Well, we have a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace which is called Bitcoin.de, which uh, is used by well, it's been around for 10 years, so it's, and it hasn't been hacked since, at least not to my knowledge. So it's, it's pretty solid. Um, that's one people are using. And for uh, Bitwala, based in Berlin, they are a, uh, they call themselves, I believe, a blockchain bank, but they are mostly working with Bitcoin for now. And they offer a, um, a traditional SIPA account, a traditional Euro account, bank account, and but you can also hold your bitcoins on their website and, and buy and sell for fiat and they also have a credit card so they're that's a pretty that's a pretty good company and there's those are those two are german based germany based in germany um, and i think those are uh, sort of the most bitcoin maximalist if you will even though they focus on other coins as well and other than that that i think a lot of um Germans just go to the traditional big exchanges that kind of pop up when you Google them. I mean, um, Kraken is probably has a good standing, but so do other exchanges. Um, and always depends on just your exact needs. Um, if you just want to trade fiat to, to Bitcoin or if you're into altcoin gambling, then you can also go to other exchanges. Um, there, I, there, there's not really like, this is not really a problem like German Germans can pretty much onboard on any exchange and will be accepted as customers. It's um, so, so I would say like they have the whole, the whole big variety um, of options. What about BISC? Do, do you see much usage of BISC? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a big, I'm a huge BISC fan and um, I try to promote it and, and use it. And I think the Euro, so BISC is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer exchange which runs locally on your computer and everybody else's computer um, over the Tor network. And you have a Euro order book, for example. And, and that has been, um, I think it has gotten a good amount of traction over the last year or so, because people start to see the need for, for more private ways to trade that doesn't expose all their data to the legacy banking system. So um, of course it's, it's not perfect either, but it's in the end, it's like, do you want to send your passport and your personal details to an exchange that might get hacked and your data like in the ledger hack leaks all over the world and it's in day? Or do you want to learn about the workings of BISC for a couple minutes and, and try your luck there? Um, they, I would opt for the second part. So, so BISC is, um, it has its, has its users, um, especially on the European market. And I just, I've, I think it's, it's growing and it's improving and, um, I'm a big fan of BISC myself, so uh, I always like to ask about it just to see if people are using it in different places. Yeah. What would you say are the most useful bit refill gift cards for people in Germany? Um, what I can tell, they're all pretty useful. I mean, uh, if you want to have my, like, I would say, from what I've heard, people use Amazon, one of the top selling probably, but um, there's also like, I think you also have supermarkets like Rewe, and there's uh, IKEA, which is a big thing in Germany. So the um, Google Play Store is something that comes into my mind. But there's really so many that I guess, um, yeah, I mean, those are the ones that have come to my mind um, that are useful. But I mean, useful for the other, per for one person is not useful for the next person. So <laughs> it's good to have options. Also, of course, the phone charging service, that's also pretty pretty useful i would say because you can just send like top up people's phones from wherever to wherever and it um, just send over the pin and you don't have to 
go out to a gas station or um, the supermarket and, and get it. So that's also pretty convenient. What, oh. what would be great uh, if the rewards were a bit higher sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let Sergey know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I guess that's, that's also like, you probably work on a tight margin on, on, on gift cards. So yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you say that it's possible to live wholly on, on Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in Germany? If, you, if you're asking whether it would be possible to use Bitcoin like directly in, in economic transactions where, for example, you pay your landlord in Bitcoin and he accepts Bitcoin without exchanging them, uh, I would say it's probably possible if you put in a lot of work and effort. People have done it before in the past years. If you use like uh, um, a lot of the tools that are available, like exchanges, credit cards, bid refill, then I would say it's definitely possible. And the infrastructure is big enough to, to be able to exchange Bitcoin on the fly for whatever you need, uh, whatever fiat cravings you have, that, that is, I, that's not a problem. And there's more options than what I just said. It's like, I still learn something new every day, so uh, I'm sure there's there's plenty of options. And if you look into that, uh, if you actually make it your project, this could also be a challenge. Like just live seven days or a month solely on Bitcoin. You'll, I'm sure you find other other services or stores um, that that help you on your on your quest. Okay. It's always so. And if somebody accepts Bitcoin directly, then of course, I mean, this is a, you know just out of principle. You, I mean, even though it might mean that you lose some stats, you can just buy it again and and support people and, and their ideas and the Bitcoin ecosystem. So I think it's something you should use and kind of circulate. And if people complain about losing stats, I mean, you can always use fiat if you have some fiat to, to repile your stock and stack some more stats. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I'm a big believer in the circular economy as well. Germany has over 300 crypto startups. How would you say that's impacted the, the Bitcoin scene in Germany? Yeah, so crypto and Bitcoin is always a bit separated. So there's Bitcoin and then, I mean, as the saying goes, there's Bitcoin and there's shitcoin. So if people are not working in the Bitcoin space, of course, there's always people that do come, like make the whole round and they start with Bitcoin, they think like, oh my, this is better and I'm going to work for them. And At some point, they come back to Bitcoin and become sort of maximalist. And this is like a journey for, for a bunch of people, at least what I've heard. Uh, and in the, in the bigger sense, so, so it's a bit separate. I, I feel like sometimes crypto Bitcoin doesn't mix all the time. And there's like these huge sort of almost silos of big projects that are, have gotten some attention. It's, for example, in Berlin, that they don't really like connect to the Bitcoin world. But... This might also be something because we didn't have any, any in-person meetings for a year now. We didn't have any conferences. So, and online, it's even more separated, I would say. You kind of are in your own filter bubble. And in real life, you can, can kind of uh, get out of your filter bubble a bit more easily and, and see other people and see other projects. And um, so I don't know if, 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 that, if it's necessarily true that, but that we like the projects don't know each other or interact but for some part even if, if it gets bigger they they just do their own thing and um a lot of these these altcoin projects if you will have their own little communities and are not as involved in a global community like bitcoin is where um, but they just build their own but overall i mean you, you see more companies more people working in in the whole crypto space and um it's been going up and uh, there's no sign of things slowing down the only thing that could come now and that has always been a bit hindering is regulation either uncertain regulation which, which was the case for many many years or um, prohibitive regulation as well um, one thing that's uh, sadly not really advanced in germany is the our bitcoin atms because the uh, financial authorities make it really hard and by hard I mean mostly expensive because you have to um, get all the paperwork done uh, on, a, on a large scale I mean we're talking like hundreds of thousands of euros just to start a, a Bitcoin ATM business so that has been pretty prohibitive and 
with all being said before, we only have around 50 ATMs or so in all over Germany, even though it's, it might, it would be a prime spot. And if you look at the neighboring countries, Switzerland, and I mean, in Switzerland, you can buy Bitcoin uh, as gift cards in, I think, 3000 supermarkets. That, that would be great for Germany. There's definitely a market, but in this case, regulation is kind of tight um, entrepreneurs' hands to go ahead and not everybody is as um, wants to really deal with the financial authorities um, to do all the paperwork if there's hundreds of other projects that you can do in Bitcoin. So that's, that's one of the, the things that is maybe not going as well, but people are on it, you know, it'll take time. Eventually that'll change too. I'm hopeful. <laughs> you mentioned regulations. Does the German government see Bitcoin like more as a threat or are they, are they embracing Bitcoin? Well, I mean, you, I would say it's similar to other countries. There's, you have like the general talking points of the critics, um, it's like the, the horsemen of the uh, apocalypse, you know, um, money laundering, human trafficking, all that, even though there's um, not really any evidence on that or it has even been de debunked, but um, I mean, it's, it's politics, you know? And then of course, in what might be a bit bigger in Germany than in other countries from certain political um, par participants is that the, the sort of energy CO2 debate. And as it stands of now, the, the German Green Party, which is not in the government right now, but has a good chance of getting in the government in the next election this September. So September, 2021, they have said, in their in their um, election program, that they are basically going to fight against uh, digital currencies and private currencies. They didn't specifically name Bitcoin, but to me, it sounds a lot like this is. Um, and from like what people said before, that they're going to go actively against Bitcoin or be really prohibitive. So uh, for now, so yeah, that's that might change. But for now, it's been. Uh, it has been under the radar, so to speak, for many years, and it's just coming up. And but but usually it comes up in the larger European uh, frameworks. It's it's more of a European topic, not necessarily a German national topic. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about living on Bitcoin in Germany that you'd like people to know? Oh, I, you've drained my brain brain properly. Uh, <laughs> I I can't really think of anything right now. Um, yeah, no, I think we've talked about it. We have talked about the Raspberry Blitz, the Fomo shop. Um, the seven days of Bitcoin challenge and the lightning hack sprint about the community, about merchant adoption, about BISC, which is a really wonderful project, um, about BitRefill, which is kind of the nature, I guess. <laughs> and uh, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's a good place to, I think the German commun Bitcoin community is great. It, it's really welcoming. It's international, especially in Berlin. Um, there, it's not only Germans speaking German all the time, but it's a pretty, pretty um, active international community. And we have some, some bigger Bitcoin projects also based in, in Berlin. And I think like most countries, it has like Bitcoin wise, there are challenges and there are opportunities. So um, it's not perfect, but it could be worse, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff, for taking time out of your day to answer my questions. I really appreciate it. This was an insightful interview. Yes, thank you very much for all the insightful questions. I was glad to talk to you. <laughs>